Each nation has a solution. If there's one case at Disneyland in Hong Kong, they shut the whole place down. We don't do that in America. I'm fascinated if you believe capitalism and certainly the American model can cure this pandemic, lessen the pain, lessen the deaths. Can we have private enterprise step in and help limit this pandemic? Well, private enterprise has played a huge role. Uh, remember that all of the vaccines developed in the U.S. were done as public-private partnerships. Uh, so that has been there. But I think what we've seen in the U.S. and what we're seeing right now, unfortunately, as cases creep up with the colder weather and heading toward Thanksgiving, uh, is that the total immunization coverage in the U.S. is still under 60 percent of everyone in the country. Uh, and that's why we're still seeing over 100,000 right. new cases a day. Well, if that's the case, what does private enterprise need to do more if that's the only identifiable solution in America? Well, I think we've had two recent advances, uh, Tom, that are going to make a big difference, and they both come from private enterprise. And those are that both Pfizer uh, and Merck, with a with a California startup called Ridgeback, uh, have put forward to the FDA uh, new antiviral drugs. And these are the first that are really COVID-specific pills don't need to be refrigerated, uh, taken twice a day for five days, that can significantly reduce symptoms and can reduce hospitalization and death. Pfizer's uh, looks really good, perhaps a 90% reduction uh, in serious disease if you take it within three to five days uh, of becoming symptomatic. So that's a big advance. And, uh, and that's really, I think, also going to help the people who are just dug in and resistant to getting immunized, uh, because this is not a vaccine. This is an antiviral drug. Um, it's very similar to Tamiflu for the flu, same kind of approach. Uh, and it also has some preventive benefits, so that if you had, for example, a household exposure, you might be able to have people go on what we'd call post-exposure prophylaxis or prevention in the household, and that could reduce everybody's risk of getting sick. So, uh, so I, think, I think these are two really important new tools. We also had good data from uh, the monoclonal antibody uh, study that was a household study, and that suggests that monoclonal antibodies could play a real role in protecting household contacts and, again, preventing people who are not immunized yeah. from getting very sick with COVID. Dr. Byer, are these tools enough to help prevent the U.S. from seeing a situation like what we're seeing over in Europe, where people are working from home again? and you're seeing some selective lockdowns in order to prevent the spread that's reaching new records? Well, that's a great question, Lisa. Unfortunately, the timing is such that these have just now, uh, Pfizer has not yet uh, submitted for emergency use authorization. So it's going to take time to get these drugs approved and to get them out into use and to see how in the, in the real world setting they actually work. We don't really have that time because uh, cases are rising. Unfortunately, deaths are rising, 1,600 a day right now in the U.S. And Thanksgiving is coming and the cold weather is coming. And if you look at the map of where the cases are happening now, it really is the northern colder states. Uh, so we're talking about next week. <laughs> uh, and none of these new products are going to be available for several months. And Dr. Byer, you spent your career studying epidemiology, studying the spread of a variety of different illnesses. Are you sick of talking about this one? Should we focus, be focused uh, on a far greater swath of potential ailments that, frankly, are just as serious but just have lost the plot amid the coronavirus? Oh. I think we're all tired of, of having yet another uh, pandemic year. You had Bill Gates just speaking about how mid-2022 we may solve the problem of the distribution and manufacture. But he also said, if you listen there, uh, that uh, demand would remain an issue. We're seeing a lot of vaccine hesitancy outside the U.S. Uh, low uptake in many African countries, even with the small number of vaccines they have. Uh, so we are are going to be, uh, 2021 will still be a pandemic year for COVID, as it has been all year. So will 2022. Uh, this is going to take some time. I, of course, have been working on HIV. That's a pandemic that's been going on now 40 years. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, many of us are kind of used to the long haul.
Doctor, just quickly, there's something I don't understand about what's happening in Europe right now. Yeah, in Ireland, 90% yeah. plus of adults are fully vaccinated, and the Irish government are reintroducing a form of restrictions, asking people to work from home if they can. I struggle to understand what's going on in Europe when we see vaccine uptake in countries like Ireland so high, yet they're grappling with this surge in cases. Why? Well, there's a couple of factors at play there. Certainly one is, is what we already know is always happening, which is colder weather moving indoors. This is an indoor virus. So uh, that is predicted. The second is, you know, all COVID vaccines are not alike. And there are vaccines that have been used that we count in coverage that actually have lower efficacy against Delta. What's happening in Europe, what's happening in Ireland is the Delta variant. And there's less coverage uh, and protection, for example, with AstraZeneca, which many of the European countries relied on early on. We have better, more robust protection against Delta with the mRNA viruses uh, and with Johnson & Johnson, particularly when it's boosted. Yeah. Uh, but many of the early immunizations in Europe were with AstraZeneca, and, and it has lower efficacy against Delta.